Craft e-stores represent a fusion of passion and entrepreneurship, but some face financial downfall. Let's delve into why these creative businesses fail and the lessons that can help new stores thrive. Practical advice for e-commerce achievement. In addition to essential criteria for launching an e-commerce site, considering insights from those who have successfully navigated the e-commerce space is crucial. Here are key recommendations to inform and guide your e-commerce strategy. Choosing the right e-commerce platform. Selecting your e-commerce platform carefully is crucial. Platforms like Shopify, WooCommerce, and Squarespace differ in user-friendliness, customization options, and cost. Steer clear of platforms that might hinder your growth or require high technical expertise unless you're equipped to handle them. Insight into manufacturing and supply chains. Exercise caution in dealings with manufacturers, particularly those abroad. Understand their operational ethos and have strong agreements to safeguard your business interests. Dealing with scams and competition. Be prepared to face various challenges including fraudulent transactions and competitive pressures. Monitor your transactions closely and be aware that success can attract attempts by competitors to undermine your business. Comprehensive skill set. Running a successful e-commerce business requires a good understanding of various fields, including business management, SEO, marketing, social media, and technology. Be prepared to either develop these skills or have a budget to hire experts. Reconsidering dropshipping. Owning your product line might be more beneficial than depending on dropshipping. This method can restrict your control over supply and quality, making it difficult to distinguish your business from others. Value proposition in reselling. If you decide to resell products, you must clearly articulate the additional value you provide over competitors, including major players like Amazon. This could be unique customer service, product bundling, or exclusive content that enhances the buying experience. Profit margin and capital. Aim for products with high profit margins, which allow for rapid business growth, or ensure you have sufficient capital to support your business. This is particularly important in competitive markets where customer acquisition costs can be high. By keeping these actionable insights in mind, you can more effectively maneuver through the e-commerce landscape, improving your chances of establishing a prosperous online business. Story-driven marketing. Story is the most powerful tool in the world to captivate the human brain. When you learn to use story in your brand's communication, your customers will finally pay attention to what you're saying. You can learn to use story to clarify your message. Here's what I'm talking about. Each story starts with a, a character. Every story begins with a character who wants something. In movies, screenwriters identify the hero at the start of the movie, and within minutes, the audience knows what they want. For example, if 12 minutes into The Bourne Identity, the audience still doesn't know exactly what Jason Bourne wants, they're going to walk out. Most companies aren't clear in explaining what they offer. When you define something your customer wants, you invite them into a very specific story. And that's what they're looking for. They're looking for you to invite them into a story. The short version is that you must summarize what you offer in just a few words. If you throw out multiple solutions to multiple problems, you'll be ignored. The human brain just isn't made to process that many storylines. You have to be known for something, preferably one thing. Ask, what do my customers want as it relates to my brand? Is my brand known for one thing it offers? Has a problem. Do you remember the old Rolodex files that sat on people's desks? The ones that held business cards, people have a Rolodex file in their brains. And when they hear about your business, they don't file your business alphabetically. They file your business under the problem you solve. If you haven't clearly defined the problem you solve, they're going to throw your business card away. The only reason people are calling you, going to your website, or walking into your retail store is because they have a problem and they need you to solve that problem. When you define that problem for your customers and offer to resolve it, they're interested. Ask, have you clearly defined the problem your brand solves? Customers aren't looking for a hero, they're looking for a guide. If you understand this important principle, you'll change how you talk about your business. Potential clients don't need another hero, they need a guide. You're not Luke Skywalker, you're Yoda. You're not Katniss, you're Haymitch. You're not James Bond, you're Q. So, when your customers come to you, don't talk about what you're trying to do. Lay out your products and services as weapons that will help them save the world, get the girl, or win the day. That's the message they respond to. Ask, are you positioning yourself as the guide, providing a strategic path for client success? To summarize the progress so far, we've clearly identified what the customer seeks, engaging them in a narrative. Their problem has been pinpointed, creating an emotional hook in the story. As their guide, we've instilled hope for resolving their issue. 
This is an advanced stage of customer engagement, not often achieved by many businesses, but it's not yet the right moment to seek a sale. Proposing a purchase too early can leave the customer feeling overwhelmed, apprehensive about financial risks or potential regret. The key to bridging this gap is offering a clear step-by-step -step plan that demonstrates the simplicity and approachability of doing business with you. Consider a financial advisor's approach, for example. Imagine the possibility of an earlier retirement than you've planned. I offer a straightforward process to help you decide. We begin with an informal meeting to understand your situation. We then analyze your retirement objectives. I'll develop a personalized retirement strategy for you. Should you choose, I'm available to guide you in implementing this strategy consistently. Presenting this structured plan eases the customer's journey towards a successful resolution. As the guide, it's your responsibility to lay out this roadmap leading your customer to success. Reflect on this. Have I established an easy-to-follow plan that simplifies my customer's decision-making process when engaging with my services? Call to action. The critical moment to make a sale has come. Remember this essential insight. Customers usually only act when explicitly invited to do so. In your role as the guide in your customer's narrative, you must issue a clear, direct challenge for them to purchase your product. This invitation needs to be unmistakable and prominent. It's here one common error is neglecting to prominently display a buy now button on the website. This oversight can lead to missed sales opportunities. Ensure your website isn't crowded with too many choices like about, contact, or FAQs. Instead, make your buy now button distinct in color and the most apparent option for the user. Consider including a secondary call to action that keeps customers engaged, even if they're not ready to purchase immediately. This approach helps in maintaining a relationship with potential customers. In summary, you need to provide a straightforward choice for your customers to either engage with your product or not. Consider this. Is my call to action clear and enticing enough to prompt my customers into action? It enables them to evade unsuccessful outcomes. This is a quintessential element in narrative construction. Protagonists are driven to act as something significant is at risk. In order to protect her sister Prim, Katniss steps up to participate in the Hunger Games. A former CIA operative has to mobilize his previous contacts and abilities to liberate his kidnapped daughter in the movie Taken. Michael is forced into the criminal underworld of his father's mafia empire, following an assassination attempt on his father in The Godfather. None of these figures were looking for involvement in their respective story's circumstances. Rather, they were pushed into action to prevent an undesirable conclusion. Think about, have you made it clear to your consumers what they stand to lose? What are the potential drawbacks if they decide against utilizing your services? It ends in a success. You need to show customers how your products can positively affect their lives. Both your website images and your sales copy should help your customers envision life with their problems solved. Show them what their life can be like without a toothache, with more money in the stock market, with their lawn looking amazing, or loving the way those clothes feel or fit. People naturally steer toward a happy ending. An excellent example is Booking.com. Competing with Travelocity, Priceline, and Hotwire, they set themselves apart from their competitors by focusing on one thing, displaying success over and over. You're going to like your trip, your hotel room, the food, the plush carpet, the weird yoga class, your whatever. You're going to love your vacation. People started booking there because they wanted to have that incredible experience. They do. If you're not telling people what their life will look like when they do business with you, they're not going to do business with you. Ask, how can you help your customer envision success after doing business with you? A well-defined message is your edge in the market. Struggling with unclear expression or vague ideas can result in customer confusion and a decrease in product sales. On the other hand, applying the seven elements of a narrative in your communication can make your message crystal clear, capturing the attention of customers and encouraging their engagement. Distrust anyone selling a how-to-make-money course of any kind. They are almost entirely BS. Read forums, talk to people, ask for advice. Anyone selling a formula is admitting publicly that they don't know how to make money using their own formula and that there's more opportunity selling courses. Case in point. A few years back, I had to let an employee go because he was just really incompetent. Six months later, he was selling a course in the material that he sucked at. Best way to learn something from a successful entrepreneur is to have a skill set useful to them. Ask or find about any pain points they have.
Listen and see if you give examples of where you have helped fix those pain points for other people. This is the hardest step as it involves getting their contact details and or meeting them. Help them out for free. Then after wowing them and really helping them with the pain, ask them for specific advice on running a similar business to them in a different niche or territory so that you are not competitor. Make sure you have already started even if you have completely failed so far so that they know you are for real. Most people at this point still aren't. It also makes things easier for them as they will know what you misunderstood and be able to tell you why your thinking is wrong. It's hard to answer how do I succeed, but it's much easier to answer I did X then Y and Z happened. What gives? Where I go from here? Follow the advice they gave you and send a handwritten gift card listing how you followed them and the results it gave you. They then will know you really are for real. 90% of people that get this far do not do this. You now have a mentor relationship. Yes, it has prerequisite skills and some risk of providing value and getting nothing back in return, but you would be surprised by the reciprocity reflex nearly all humans have. Don't say at the beginning, you are looking for a mentor relationship, just say, you are looking for pain points in order to provide value and impact. This also is the ultimate way to move up ranks within companies, do big sales, and just generally network and succeed at the big game of life. 99% of people aren't doing it. Will you be the 1%? Barrier to entry. How difficult or easy is it for someone to set up the same thing you are doing? If it's just pulling a feed of products and throwing up a store, you've got a lot of competition to deal with. If there's a lot more research, effort, and investment involved, you'll be more serious about the business and you'll be dealing with fewer competitors, which is good. The physical characteristics of your product, such as size, weight, and durability, are important. These factors impact shipping costs and the risk of damage during transit. Larger and heavier items are more expensive to ship, while fragile items carry a higher risk of damage. Suppliers. How is the customer service and support for your suppliers? Are they responsive and good communicators? Any issues that may arise have to be dealt with promptly, and the better your supplier and your relationship is, the easier it will be to keep a smoothly sailing ship. Perishability. If you sell food items, you have to sell them very quickly, otherwise they can spoil, and your money is basically gone. Perishability can also pose challenges with reactive chemicals, among other significant considerations in such cases. Think about the likelihood of customers making repeat purchases. Does your product invite continuous buying, like consumable or perishable goods? If customers enjoy your product, they may become repeat buyers, which is a significant advantage. This is one of the attractions of subscription-based e-commerce models. Consider how tough your competitors are. Are they industry leaders with years of experience and a solid market presence, continually innovating? Or do they leave gaps that you can exploit? It's important to enter a competitive space where you have a fighting chance, avoiding markets where the competition is too overwhelming. Local availability. Is what you are selling found everywhere in Targets or Walmarts? Or do people have to really look to find it? If it's readily available in stores, not all potential customers will seek it online. If it's a rarity, then people looking for it will have to search online and the chances of finding you are higher. Determine the scope of your market. How many potential customers are there for your product or service? Understanding the size of your market is vital to assess if the profits will justify your time and investment. Methods to assess include using Google Keyword Planner, analyzing competitor numbers, tracking social media discussions, and monitoring blog mentions related to your product or niche. Turnover. How many times does your entire product line have to refresh? If you are selling clothing, probably very often. If you sell tools, probably very rarely. High turnover can be challenging if you have unsold stock when the manufacturer releases a new line. If you drop ship, this won't affect you as much. Focus on building a scalable and expandable business. If your current order processing is labor intensive, think about how you'd handle a sudden increase in orders due to events like media exposure. Developing a scalable business model is key for future growth. Seasonality. Is your product something that people only buy for a few months during the year, or is it year-round? The longer your buying season is, the better for you. Even if sales are slow, you still have bills to pay. So it's better to have a product that sells well for as long as possible. Do you have a clear understanding of who your ideal customer is? Is there an opportunity to narrow down your niche further to cater more specifically to your audience? Identifying your target market is a challenging task that may become more apparent with sales trends and patterns.
While initial uncertainty is common, continually refining your target market should be a key focus. Potential to add value. Consider what unique aspects your product brings to the market. If you're manufacturing a product, does it offer something that isn't available elsewhere? For resellers, think about how you enhance the shopping experience through education, selection, presentation, etc., compared to your competition. Being able to offer additional value helps you stand out rather than just being another option in the market. Strive to be a standout, me, merchant, rather than just another one in the crowd. My entrepreneurial journey began with a modest $600 loan from my mother, eventually growing into a prosperous venture generating six-figure revenues annually. At 31, life circumstances led me back to living with my parents, a difficult transition compounded by knee surgery, and in-swing bed confinement. My enthusiasm for tea took me to Alibaba, where I connected with a supplier in Taiwan offering exquisite Chinese and Taiwanese teas in small 25-gram packages. Selling these teas on eBay initially proved challenging. Despite my efforts to lower prices, the response was underwhelming. Convinced of my product's excellence, I revamped my sales approach, adopting assertive advertisements and significantly raising the prices, which led to a surge in sales. The revenues from eBay were promising but insufficient for investing in a Shopify site. Consequently, I took on the challenge of learning website development as well as SEO, PPC, and product photography. This was a decade ago when the competition wasn't as fierce, making it somewhat easier to bootstrap a business. Gradually, I established a well-respected and successful artisan tea brand. Building a business from scratch is certainly achievable with dedication and hard work. Despite the need for considerable personal sacrifices, I continued living with my parents to reinvest in my business, even after having the financial means to leave. I dedicated myself tirelessly without taking any days off for six years, except for a week's holiday, during which I continued working. Additionally, I grappled with heavy alcohol consumption as a coping mechanism. For those with limited capital, platforms like eBay are a viable starting point. Despite some criticism, eBay is a great learning ground for mastering persuasive product descriptions and quality photography. Many miss out on potential earnings due to poor product presentations. I myself have sold vast quantities using just my iPhone for product photos. Diligence and perseverance are more crucial than abundant resources in achieving success. It's normal to encounter self-doubt and discouragement. Today, I enjoy a fulfilling life with a lovely family, yet I still face anxiety and feelings of being an imposter. A decade-long commitment to daily meditation has been instrumental in helping me deal with these challenges and stay focused on my objectives. Achieving success doesn't necessarily eliminate self-doubt. Many people, regardless of their outward confidence, experience internal struggles. My own journey, filled with overcoming personal challenges and learning to handle my insecurities, has been integral to my success. I've now overcome using alcohol as a way to cope with these issues. Launching your e-commerce journey. Some of you might skip this initial step. However, this is how your e-commerce era starts. Don't jump to create a website. Seriously, have one firm idea in place and define the niche that you want to sell. That requires market research, including competitors, market demands, trending products to find out the right product. Trend Hunter or Google Trend might be of help to your research. Decisions on a niche will affect your sales figure, capital, and strategy to approach customers. Set up your store. Giving an easy to spell name will pay off your effort. What you need to do is trying to shorten the name to impress your audiences and use a standard domain like .com. The weird or non-popular domain will confuse the visitors and even bring negative assessments over your store. An essential step in building your online store is the careful selection of an e-commerce platform. This platform serves as more than just a website builder. It's the central hub for managing all critical aspects of your online business, including inventory, order processing, fulfillment, product catalog, and marketing activities. Many small businesses favor a range of platforms for establishing their online presence. When it comes to choosing an e-commerce platform, small businesses often debate between Big Commerce and Shopify. Shopify is generally recommended for smaller businesses, while Big Commerce is more suited for larger operations with intricate inventory requirements or those looking to minimize processing fees. If your business is not a dedicated e-commerce site, but rather a blog, coaching, or publishing site that also sells merchandise, you may want to create a WordPress site and add a WooCommerce or other WordPress shopping cart plugin. 
Businesses can turn any existing WordPress site into an e-commerce store by using these plugins, so it is a good option for those looking to sell merchandise or expand into retail sales. Making an informed choice among different e-commerce platforms is crucial. I found that many review platforms don't always present the full scenario. For real, unbiased reviews and comprehensive analysis, my go-to resource has been Hosto.com. This site stands out for its truthful user reviews and detailed evaluations, making it a priceless resource for anyone dedicated to selecting the most suitable platform for their online business needs. Pre-sale preparation phase. Prior to the official launch, it's crucial to get your products ready for display in your online store. This includes setting up detailed and compelling product descriptions, showcasing high-quality images, setting the right prices, and outlining shipping and maintenance processes. Effective product descriptions do more than introduce your items. They can also be a powerful tool to attract more visitors to your site. Simultaneously, you must study and plan a marketing plan. Adding a blog or integrating with social media like Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook will be the best option to drive organic traffic to your website. Launching sales and operating the store. With the groundwork laid, it's time to start selling and operating your store. This stage calls for confidence and resilience, as you'll be applying all the hard work and preparation you've put in and dealing with any challenges that come your way. There are some tips that can be influential and beneficial to your site's performance. Social media. Stay active on social media as a strategy to build and maintain the individual relationship and anticipation for your customers. Reviews from former buyers. Testimonial quotes from your customers will direct your potential customers to the insight of your offerings. Promotion. Customers love bargains. Providing some coupon or discount code during special seasons or store clearance time can help you to dip toes into the e-commerce business. Business growth and expansion. When you observe consistent growth in your store, it's time to think about scaling up your e-commerce operations. This could involve collaborating with influencers relevant to your niche to help promote your products. Additionally, make sure to continually monitor and evaluate your store's performance using tools for analytics and reporting to gain valuable insights and inform your growth strategies. Navigating advertising changes. Stay informed about the latest trends and changes in digital advertising, especially concerning privacy updates like Apple's. Understand how these changes affect ad personalization and plan your strategies accordingly. Ad testing and creatives. When it comes to ads, prioritize testing different creatives to find what resonates with your audience. The right ad creative can significantly impact conversion rates. Be prepared for a lot of trial and error in this process. Social media engagement. Keep your social media channels active. Use platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest to build buzz and engage with your potential customer base. Pre-launch email list building. Start building your email list even before your store goes live. This can create a ready audience to market to once you launch. Building trust with imagery. Use high quality, authentic images for your products. Avoid generic stock images as they can detract from the trustworthiness and uniqueness of your store. Mindset for success. Alter your approach from not focusing on immediate sales to understanding the importance of early traction. Even though your primary goal might be learning and experimentation, early sales can provide invaluable feedback and momentum. Shipping strategy. Keep your shipping options simple and affordable. This can be a deciding factor for customers considering a purchase. Store design principles. Embrace simplicity in your store's design. Avoid cluttering with excessive apps or complicated features. Focus on a clean, consistent aesthetic with uniform branding, colors, and fonts. Historically simpler stores often outperform overly complex ones. Platform choice. Consider using Shopify for your e-commerce platform. Its ease of setup, reliability, and customization options make it a preferred choice for both small and large businesses. Evaluate its cost-effectiveness against your specific needs. Essential marketing tools. Implement a robust email marketing strategy right from the start. Use tools like Klaviyo to set up basic email flows and learn from online resources. Email marketing can be a significant driver of revenue with relatively low effort.